Hi, I'm Christine. Welcome to week four of the 40 Days of Restoration Small Group Studies. This week, we're looking at Psalm 51 and restoring ministry. So David, one of the most recognisable people in the Bible, wrote Psalm 51 after he was confronted by Nathan the prophet about his adultery with Bathsheba and his successful plot to have her husband Uriah killed in battle to hide his sin. This is the same David who before this had been chosen by God as a young shepherd to be the future king, who killed Goliath, who had trusted God with his life when he was on the run from King Saul, but he was still human and he still sinned. David thought he could hide his sin from others and God, but that was impossible. All it did was drive a wedge in the relationship that David has with God, so he feels very remote from him. But rather than remain in that place, he makes a decision. David pours out his heart, asking for forgiveness and then restoration of the joy he had before. It's a really powerful prayer. There's so much that we can learn from this, but as we only have a few minutes, I'm going to focus on verses 12 and 13. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. What's the joy of salvation that David has, write, has written about here? In Psalm 4, it says, You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. An abundant harvest is a really good thing, but it's a temporary thing, which comes from good circumstances rather than actually knowing God. So there's nothing wrong in having that kind of joy in our lives. But if we only rely on that, then as soon as life changes, illness, losing your job, difficulties with relationships, then the joy is gone. But the joy of salvation is what people discover when they become Christians, knowing God loves you, that Jesus died for you, and that the Spirit is in you. Joy is, after all, one of the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians, which I personally often overlook. I probably reflect more on the others like peace or love. We've recently watched people being baptised at church and we could see the joy on their faces. They all had beaming smiles when they came out of the water. One of them, well John actually, mentioned that he now feels like he has the Ready Breck glow. For anyone too young to know what that is, it was an ad campaign for a cereal which had the slogan Get Up and Glow because it implied that the cereal would give you so much energy and warmth that you would walk around with a red glow around you. That baptism service helped me reflect on my Christian life. Do I still feel the ready Brett glow? Because I know I had it when I first became a Christian at 17, but maybe joy isn't what I feel a lot of the time now. I seem to allow circumstances or busyness to take it from me, which can leave me feeling distant from God. For example, this year, after a long battle with ill health, one of my best friends from school died. I found and still find that loss really hard to understand. I know I haven't lost my salvation when I'm feeling low and far from God, but I have definitely lost the joy. Rick Warren has a great definition of joy. Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right and the determined choice to praise God in all things. I like this because it breaks it down into three things. The first one is trust God. We looked at that a couple of weeks ago in Psalm 31. For me, I need to say, I trust in you God, even though I don't understand why my friend had such a difficult life and died too young in my eyes. The second thing is to have perspective. Christian life is more than this life, so circumstances here are temporary, not eternal. Although I can't see or talk to my friend here and now, I know that she's in heaven and actually life is a lot better for her now with her perfect new body, but with no disease or pain. Choose joy. That's the third one, choose joy. If we're worrying about something, we need to choose joy over that worry. Give the worry over to God and then there's room for joy. My grief is still there, but joy can exist in the pain. They aren't mutually exclusive. So going back to Psalm 51, David knows he has to make a choice to ask for joy, 
to have that true relationship with God again and to keep going with the work he needs to do. He realises he didn't experience any joy in covering up the sin at all. He recognises in the verses leading up to verse 12 that first he needs to be forgiven for all his sins and that only by confessing them and getting them out in the open with God can that actually happen. The relationship is restored and in Psalm 32 there is his joyful prayer as a response. It shows that no matter what we've done or how far we feel from God, if David can have joy restored, then so can we. However we live our lives, the joy of salvation can leak, not just when big things happen to us, like my friend's death. Practically, what can we do to plug the leak? So the first thing is talk to God. We can pray, we can confess our sins like David did, read the Bible so we don't feel distant from God, keep coming back to him because that's how our relationships get closer. The second thing is recognise warning signs that you're already feeling distant and ask God to help. Like picking up a phone to someone you haven't talked to for ages, the connection will still be there, but it just needs that first step. The third thing is to get encouragement from other Christians. So make an effort to come to church, whether physically or online, have a small group, be brave and ask for prayer and help when you need it. And finally, we also need to recognise if we need other help too. So sometimes we do need to go to a professional for our well-being, and that's okay. Physical and mental health problems can be a barrier. By choosing joy, the rest of verse 12 and 13 flows. So going back to that, restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels and they will return to you. Because we are Christians and been saved and have joy as one of the fruits of the spirit, then we want to obey God and we want to do whatever work he has given us uniquely to do. David had a job to do, but knew he couldn't do any of it without having his relationship with God restored. And that's why he asked to be forgiven before then asking for a restoration of joy. Whatever we do, God knows how we're feeling and whether we're distant or close to him. We can't hide it from him, even if we can hide from the people around us. We can't do or be our best in these roles if we're stuck in a rut, doing things out of obligation or feeling upset that our work is going unnoticed by others. If we're feeling those things, then maybe God wants us to ask again for joy because he he is the only source of the joy that gives us inner contentment and satisfaction. Having the joy of the spirit will give us a renewed desire to want what God wants, whatever we're doing for him. So let's pray, restore to me the joy of your salvation, just like David did, so we can have that ready breath glow in our lives every day. And so that the things we do aren't done out of obligation or duty, but from a place of excitement about what God can do in our lives, no matter what situation we're in, when we have that close relationship with him. Amen.